At the University of Würzburg, bees are in the focus of scientific interest. They have set up several beehives in the field where bee colonies can be observed. In one of the beehives, the queen bee can be seen laying her eggs in honeycomb cells. Today, a special event can be observed. One part of the bee colony has left the old hive and has swarmed out with the old queen to search for a new home. In the laboratory, a feeding experiment with bees is being conducted. A team of scientists at the Department of Animal Ecology and Tropical Biology is investigating the question of how well bees can tolerate genetically modified Bt maize pollen. Teresa Hügel wants to find out whether bees infected with a gut parasite tolerate Bt maize less well than healthy bees. In healthy bees, no negative effects of Bt maize pollen have yet been recorded. But what happens if the animals are ill and already stressed? First, a set number of bees is placed in a collection cage. These bees here are all less than 24 hours old. We have just swept them off their brood nest, so that we have bees of the same age in all cages. And especially at the beginning of their growth period, they take up great amounts of pollen. This is important for our experiments, because we have to ensure that they actually ingest all the pollen that we feed them. Four test groups of bees are fed different diets. One group is only given pollen from genetically modified maize plants. A control group feeds on non-modified pollen of the same maize variety, and a third group on pollen mixed from other plants. All the animals in the experiment are additionally supplied with a sucrose solution. And for the fourth test group of bees, the sucrose solution is the only feeding source. During the time of the experiment, the bees are kept in a breeding chamber at 26 degrees Celsius. At the end of the experiment, all the bees' guts are taken out to be examined under the microscope. So I've grabbed hold of the stinging apparatus now, and after you've loosened it, you can very easily pull it out together with the hindgut and the midgut of the bee. And it is the hindgut that I will then closely examine. One part of the bees was infected with the gut parasite Neusema during the experiment. Now the scientists are going to analyze whether the Neusema infection has influenced the digestion in the bee gut particularly whether the Bt maize pollen was less well digested than other pollen diets in the case of Neusema infestation. Because if this was the case, it could have a negative effect on bee health. The scientists carefully record how many grains of pollen were digested and to what extent they were digested. Here you can see a grain of maize pollen that is still virtually undigested. The spores of the parasite Neusema are also very well visible under the microscope. Katja Rahn is working on a further experiment. She is studying the learning behavior of honeybees and wants to find out whether the ingestion of genetically modified Bt maize pollen affects their learning ability. For her experiment, test animals are fed pollen either from modified or non-modified maize for two weeks before the so-called classical conditioning is carried out. Bees react to sucrose and they protrude their proboscis. We can make use of this behavior in classical conditioning experiments by exposing them to a fragrance and simultaneously we give them sucrose. In the course of the experiment, which is carried out over several days, the bees are supposed to learn that the supply of the sucrose solution is connected to this fragrance. Finally, the fragrance stimulus alone should trigger the protrusion of their proboscis. So far, it does not appear that bees fed with Bt maize pollen learn less well than other bees.